Hey, what's up? It's your bro, Mario Escobedo. Welcome to the Christian Bro Code YouTube channel. And I am doing a live stream right now. It is about six o'clock in the morning on Valentine's Day, February the 14th, 2019. I, I hope you made some kind of plans for you and your wife. At least bought her something. I bought something for my wife and for my two daughters. I have two teenage daughters, so I, you know, I, I buy stuff for them too. They're not up yet, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to them as soon as they get up. Hey, I'm doing, I'm doing this live stream. Uh, it, it's a Bible study that I'm gonna do with you. As you get ready this morning, maybe you're, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still struggling with my voice a little bit. Maybe you're uh, shaving. I cut myself shaving this morning. Man, look at that. It's a big one too. So if I, uh, anyway. Maybe you're, you're, uh, maybe you're already driving to work. Maybe you're uh, getting ready for work, getting ready. I don't know. I don't know. But I wanted to share this Bible study with you. Uh, I think it's something that will encourage you, something that will challenge you as a, as a Christian bro. And the whole purpose of this is that uh, I'm, I'm on this journey of discovery right now. I mean, that's what I'm going to call it, a journey of discovery. <coughs> In this journey of discovery, this is what it's about. Uh, I want to learn how to grow as a disciple of Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn that right now, how to grow as a disciple of Jesus. And so what I'm doing is I'm going through the Gospels and I'm trying to learn how to be a disciple of Jesus. And uh, with that, I'm going and, and I'm asking some specific questions about the Gospels. And right now I'm in the Gospel of Mark. And I want to share some stuff that I've, I've learned that I've been thinking about, uh, dialogue with you. Hopefully you'll get some benefit out, out of this. Uh, just, you know, making sure that we grow as disciples of Jesus, Christian bros who want to grow as disciples of Jesus. So uh, I'm going to be looking at Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, pointing out some stuff that I found very interesting in my study. Now look, let, let me say this right now, that YouTube, and including this channel, The Christian Bro Code, YouTube should not be a replacement for what you should be doing with your local church. Uh, I mean, th this, this should be like the icing on top, right? This should be the extra stuff. You shouldn't depend on YouTube or on this channel or any channel for that matter for your spiritual growth. That should be coming from your local church body, from your pastor, from your men's small group, from your discipleship at church, whatever. This is just extra. This is just on top of that. Don't depend on this for your spiritual growth. Make sure you're getting that actively engaged in your local church so that you're growing the way you should be growing. All right. So let me get into this. Uh, Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. And I'll be making some some... Uh, annotations off here to the side, uh, some things that, again, I find interesting from, from this passage. Now, by this point in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus has already been baptized. He already uh, went through temptation in the wilderness, uh, and, and, and the Gospel of Mark moves very quickly. In Matthew, chapter 1 is all about the genealogy of Jesus, the prophecies of His birth, His birth, and, all, and we don't get to anything as far as action is concerned until like chapter 4. In, in Matthew, Mark, we're barely in the first 20 verses and Jesus is already calling his disciples. So Mark is a much more fast paced gospel than Mark, uh, than Matthew, I'm sorry, and even Luke. So here uh, in, in verse 16 of chapter one, this is when Jesus calls his first disciples. By the way, I've got my hot beverage of choice here. Maybe you do as well. Jesus calls his first disciples Let's see what this passage says. It says, Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Makes sense. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I'll make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and, his John, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. Now, I'm assuming that when Jesus called James and John, he used the same calling that he used with Peter and, uh, and, and uh, Andrew, follow me and I'll make you become fishers of men. Now, let me, let me point out some things that I find very interesting. And, and what, what I do is that I want to ask some questions. Did, the first question I ask, and I have another video about this on this channel. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. But whenever I read the Gospels, this is the approach I'm taking. I ask three questions. Number one, is there something that Jesus taught about being his disciple? Did he give a teaching about being a disciple? In this case, no. Is there something that somebody did, other than Jesus, that I can imitate uh, as a disciple of Jesus? And in this case, I would say yes. It's uh, Simon, or all four of these men, 
that when they were called by Jesus, they immediately stopped what they were doing, they left what they were doing, and they followed Jesus. I can imitate that as a, as a disciple of Jesus, I can imitate that. But the big question I want to ask, is there something that Jesus did that I can imitate as a disciple? Because after all, I'm not a disciple of Simon, of Andrew, uh, of James, or of John. I'm a disciple of Jesus. So when I look to the Gospels, I want to see, is there something that Jesus did that I can imitate as, as his disciple? And, and I'm going to point out some things that I think, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I can do as his disciple. Now, the first thing I want to point out is right here where Jesus says in verse 17, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. That phrase right there where Jesus says, follow me. Now, I'm not an expert in Jewish traditions. I'm not in Judaism and stuff like that. I'm not an expert in that stuff. If you know more about this, you know, correct me or let me know in the comments what, what I need to study up on. Uh, but here's my understanding. Follow me is a, was a typical rabbi saying, meaning when a rabbi chose a disciple, the way he would tell him, be my disciple, is he would say, follow me. And so Jesus here is very clearly calling his disciples. He's going to be their teacher, their discipler, their rabbi, and they're going to be his disciples. He says, follow me. However, there's something that takes place here. Jesus how do, he, he reverses the roles between rabbi and disciple. Here's what I mean. Typically, it was the disciple who would go to the rabbi and ask the rabbi, can I be your disciple? Will you be my rabbi? And then, you know, there'd be a period, I guess, of, of interviews or exams. I don't know exactly how that would happen. And the rabbi would decide, yes, you can be my disciple. I will be your rabbi. And he would then tell him, now, follow me. Right? He would issue that call. Follow me. But Jesus reverses that. These men did not, had not approached him wanting to be his disciples. He approached them. And he told them, follow me. Now, there's more to this. It's very interesting. There's more to this because as I understand it, again, I'm not an expert in Jewish customs or traditions, but as I understand it, every young Jewish boy at five years old would begin to learn the, the Bible, the Torah. They, they'd begin to study on the Torah. This was just typical. This was part of Jewish custom. They would begin to learn about the Bible, about the Torah at about five years old. Now, as I understand it, as they grew and they arrived at 13 years old, uh, they would uh, become a bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah, a son of the commandments, a typical Jewish celebration. And at this point, it would be decided, okay, there are some who are doing a little better than others in their studies. They should continue. Uh, you other guys, you know, let's say it's only three guys. Hey, you're doing really well. Continue in your studies of the Torah. You other guys over here, you know, may, maybe you could do something else. I mean, you're, you're doing well, but you don't show that promise, okay? You should do something else. And so then from about 13 to 17 years old, again, this is my understanding, these that did a, a good job would continue their study a bit more intensely, right? They, they do it with a bit more uh, in, intensity, and at 17 years old, there'd be another filter. At 17 years old, then the best of the best could then go and look for a rabbi and say, I'd like to be your disciple. And the rabbis would decide. Now, the ones who weren't cut out for this, the ones who didn't show promise of studying under a rabbi, they were told, okay, uh, do something else. Find a vocation. And more than likely, it was going to be, be the vocation of their father. Now, what makes this interesting is that when we come here to the calling of these disciples, we find that Simon and Andrew, they're casting it into the sea. And then look at the detail that it includes right here, for they were fishermen. What does that tell us? That tells us that they <clears throat> didn't make the cut, so to speak, to follow a rabbi. They, they didn't have what it took in order to continue in their studies of the Bible to maybe hopefully at some point become rabbis themselves. And so they had to find another vocation. They were fishermen. So we see a couple of things happening here when Jesus calls them to be his disciples. Number one, he called them. They didn't ask him if they could be his disciples. He called them. Number two, they were probably past the age of being disciples. And number three, they had in certain way, in a certain way, they'd already been disqualified from being disciples because they were already fishermen. So here, here's something that I take away. 
as a disciple of Jesus, as somebody who wants to be a disciple so that I can make other disciples, I, I take some things away from Jesus' actions right here. And what I see is that really to be a disciple of Jesus, no one is necessarily disqualified from being a disciple of Jesus. In the time of Jesus, these men were disqualified from being disciples of the rabbis of the day, but they weren't disqualified from being the disciples of Jesus. And notice what Jesus did. He went to them. Whereas typically it was disciples went looking for a rabbi. In this case, Jesus went to them. Jesus sought them out. And that's something that I think that I can take away as, as, a, as a disciple of Jesus who wants to make other disciples. That I, I, don't, I, I don't necessarily just wait. Just hang around waiting for people to come to me to know about God or to grow in, in the things of God, to learn about the Bible. You know, I, I shouldn't just wait around waiting for those people to come to me. The example that Jesus gave, let me turn down this mic, I think it's a little loud. The example that Jesus gave is that he went and he actively sought and went after those he wanted to follow him. And I think that's something I, I can take away. Man, if I'm looking to make, to be a disciple who makes disciples, then I need to go look for them. Jesus completely reversed the model. He, he completely turned it on its head. And he said, I'm going to go look for my disciples. I'm not going to wait for them to come to me. I'm going to go and I'm going to hand pick my disciples and choose the ones that I want to disciple to be my followers. I, I can take that away from, from this passage. The other thing uh, is, is it, I find this very fascinating, where Jesus says, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. Now, what I find interesting about this is that when Jesus says that, Jesus is, how, here's how I'll, I'll say this, Jesus is focusing on outcome, not on task. That's an important distinction. That's a very important distinction. Jesus is focusing on outcome, not on task. I'll, 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 say, it, I'll say it another way. Jesus is focusing on what these men can become not what they're going to do, all right? If you're looking at the NIV, the NIV says, uh, I think the translation of the NIV of this verse is, I will, I will teach you how to fish for men. And, and that's, not, that's not an accurate translation. If you consult the original language, the Greek, it's not a, an accurate translation. I'm looking at the ESV here, <clears throat> the English Standard Version. This is a much more accurate translation from the Greek. I will make you become. I will turn you into something. Right now, you're this. If you become my disciples, if you follow me, I'm going to transform you into this. Right now you're fishers of fish, but I'm going to teach you, train you, disciple you so that you will become fishers of men. Notice, he's focusing on the outcome, not on the task. He's focusing on what they can become. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. He's focusing on what they can become, not on what they're going to do. And I think that's really important as 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 we look at our own lives, as we look at people that we can disciple, be, be it our, our children, our families, other people and other men in the church, whoever you're trying to disciple to be more like Jesus, focus on the outcome, not on the task. Don't focus on all the things that, okay, you're gonna have to do this. If you wanna follow Jesus, if you wanna be a Christian, let me tell you all the things you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to stop doing this. You're gonna have to start doing this. You better learn how to do this. You got We're focusing on task. Look at what Jesus did. He focused on outcome. This is what you're going to become. Now, I'll walk you through the details and the tasks that are going to get you to that. But what Jesus did is that, let me put it this way. He, he stood in their future, right? He stood in, 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 a future, in, in their future and he said, I can already see what you're going to become. And if you follow me, here's what you're going to become. Here's what I'm going to make you become if you follow me. Right? And that, that's great. He focused on outcome. He focused on the result. He focused on what they would become, not all the things they were going to have to do. Of course they were going to have to do tasks and things and learn how to do and stop doing this and that. But that's not the call that Jesus issued to them. The call was, here's what you're going to become. Imagine if Jesus had, had gone with the disciples and he said, hey, follow me. You're going to have to uh, give up absolutely everything for me. You're not going to have a place to sleep. You're not going to have a place to lay your head. Uh, you're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be persecuted. 
uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to break with tradition. Now, if he started listing out all those things, the tasks that they were gonna have to do in order to become his disciples, I, I mean, I, I would have said, thanks but no thanks, right? I'm fine here with my fishing net. I'm just gonna keep going with my fishing net. I'm happy here with my pops. I'm gonna take over the family business at some point. Thanks but no thanks. But Jesus didn't talk about task. He didn't talk about what they were going to do. He talked about what they were going to become, outcome. Very important. And, and it's no different for us today that Jesus calls us, and he doesn't start the call with all the things we're going to have to do, all the tasks we're going to have to do in order to be his disciples. He starts with outcome. Follow me, and I'm going to make you fishers of men. Now, this is interesting, too, because the outcome, the outcome uh, and, and let, let, let me, that, that's the biggest takeaway for me right here, that Jesus focused on outcome, what they were going to become. He didn't focus on task, not what they were going to do. And as disciples of Jesus, I, I want to imitate that. Now, I, I need to imitate that as I'm discipling others, as I'm teaching others, as I'm guiding others. I need to imitate that in Jesus, that I, when I'm going to teach somebody, evangelize somebody, I need to focus on the outcome, not on all the tasks. I can imitate that from Jesus. Now, notice the outcome. Okay, notice the outcome that Jesus, I, I can say promised them or, or called them to, is that you're going to become fishers of men. And this, this to me is another, another word for disciples that make other disciples. That's how, that's how I would describe fishers of men, or one of the ways that I would describe becoming fishers of men. You're going to become my disciples, but the intention of you becoming my disciples is that you would make other disciples. This is the call that goes out to any follower of Jesus, not just these original disciples. This is the call that goes out to any follower of Jesus. We, we, we've lost it, and, and, I, and I include myself in this. We've, we've lost the call. And here's what I mean, that we become followers of Jesus for all the benefits that we're told Jesus is going to give us. Nothing wrong with all the benefits. Jesus promised us peace. Jesus promised us joy. Jesus promised us eternal life in His presence. There's, there's, there's truth there. That, that's true. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the initial call is, I'm going to make you fishers of men. That's the reason Jesus called us. Now, we get the benefits of being followers and disciples of Jesus, but the reason, the purpose for him having called us is so that we could become fishers of men, so that we could become disciples that make other disciples. That's what he's telling the disciples here. And just think about what Jesus did when he came to this earth. I see that his purpose when he came in his first coming was to offer salvation and forgiveness of sin to anybody who would put their faith in him. And Jesus probably could have gone to the biggest coliseums, um, amassed the biggest crowds, because we see that crowds would follow him all the time. And he could have probably achieved that on his own. He, he, he could have stayed on earth indefinitely until there were enough followers of him to start a massive movement. But he invested three and a half years of his life in doing what? In discipling 12 men. That's it. And the idea is that by discipling those 12 men, those 12 men would then disciple another well, I'm going to say 11 because Judas messed up, right? That those 11 men who continued as followers of Jesus as the disciples would disciple another 11. And then those 22 would disciple another 22. And that was Jesus' methodology and strategy. And it's all in this call. The call was, I'm going to make you become fishers of men. I want you to be disciples that make other disciples, right? That's the whole point of the call. And that call doesn't apply only to pastors or only to, um, uh, what, oh, uh, let's see, still going live. <clears throat> it doesn't apply only to pastors, it doesn't only apply to um, uh, preachers and people in the, quote, professional ministry, no, 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 it's anybody, anybody who is a disciple, a follower of Jesus, we have this call to be disciples that make disciples. So I, I again, I, I take that away. Those are the, for me, those are the biggest takeaways from, from, this, from this Bible study, from this passage. The fact that Jesus focuses on outcome, not on task. Definitely that Jesus reversed, he flipped the script in that he, I mean, he was all about, I'm gonna go after the disciples. Even if, they are, if they're disqualified, even if they're not ideal, 
I'm going after the, I'm going to go after my disciples. Uh, and then again, the biggest takeaway for me that I would imitate, that I would want to imitate as a disciple of Jesus, uh, focus on outcome, who they can become. Don't focus on tasks, meaning what they have to do, because I've been called to be a fisher of men as well, a disciple that makes other disciples. All right. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's the Bible study for this morning. 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 Those are my thoughts on Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. And uh, I'll continue to do these in the morning. I'm not going to do every single passage in the book of Mark, and I'm not going to do something every single morning. But I'm going to do more of these because I'm really interested in, in, in sharing with you the stuff that I'm learning as I do my personal Bible study, uh, just sharing that stuff with you uh, so that we can both grow, right? So we can grow together uh, as disciples of Jesus, learning how to become disciples of Jesus. And not just any kind of disciple, but disciples that make other disciples. All right? Well, that's it for now, bro. Uh, have a great day. Uh, God bless. See you next time.